Was there any sort of chip on your team's shoulder with Notre Dame being the one seed, you guys being the two seed, but of course you guys finished ahead of Notre Dame in the ACC. Um, did that factor into it at all? Of course. Uh, we all try to use every motivational uh, factor possible. So that was certainly one. Um, I thought we had a, a pretty good year. Uh, for most of the year, we were uh, seeded number one. Then all of a sudden, we win the ACC, and then we progress to the ACC final. And we go from when we entered that weekend from a number uh, one seed to a number two seed. I thought that was sort of curious. Now, obviously, I don't think, you know, anyone is being malicious, but I want to see the math. Uh, so uh, basically, yeah. So we went in with that chip on our shoulder. Um, and uh, we assembled every conceivable chip we could find and loaded them up on both of our shoulders when we came into this match. So rest assured, yes, that was one of them. And Allie, could you, could you speak to that too? Uh what, uh, kind of proving the committee wrong. Yeah, I mean, he kind of he kind of covered it. Obviously, we worked really hard this season and won the regular season, but um, unfortunately, fell short in the final. And it always stinks not to have a home field advantage for the Elite Eight. But I think we came. Oops. Can you still hear me? Yes, you good. <laughs> I think we came into this game having traveled to South Bend, and we used that as motivation. And I think. It didn't really matter who was the one seed, who was the two seed. I think it just mattered who played the better game today. Can you describe the goal? It looked like it went off the goalie's fingertips and off the crossbar, and then you just managed to beat a defender to head it in. Can you talk about that goal? I mean, Libby took an excellent shot. She beat a player, drilled it off the crossbar, so that was pretty much all her, and I was just there to kind of get it from the rebound off the crossbar and head it in, thankfully. Uh, you don't get many headers. When was the last time you scored on a header? Yeah, I actually have no idea. Um, but thankfully, we work on heading a lot in practice. And it's kind of the one thing that our team really prides ourselves on is winning those headers. So I was just trying to do what any one of my teammates would have done. You talk about the, the second half. It got a lot more physical. And maybe a few mistakes gave them more chances. But you guys were able to fend them all off. Uh, what was that dynamic there in the second half? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's the Elite Eight. Every, both teams want to win. It's going to be intense. There's going to be a lot of pressure. It's going to be tension on the field. But I think our team really just came together, really connected, and went into every tackle with heart and pride. And I'm just really proud of this team because even when it got chippy, even when it got really hard in the end, we really just came out on top. Uh, obviously, you guys knew Notre Dame had a ton of weapons coming into the game, one of the best scoring offenses in the country. But – Corbin Albert especially, what do you guys think you did well to contain her to zero shots in the first half and then just one on goal? Well, we paid her the respect that I think she deserves. Uh, if I had to vote on the best player in the country this year, it would be Corbin Albert. Uh, we watched all these great goals that she scored. And uh, so basically, our attitude is uh, when we show someone respect, uh, we just basically uh, try to do everything we can to prevent them from taking the game over. So that was our measure of respect for this unbelievable player. But that's not the only weapon for Notre Dame. Uh, their uh, back three are excellent, uh, and we had to figure out a way to break them down. And so to score two goals against one of the elite defenses in the country and also to slow down some of the most exciting attacking players, and it goes beyond uh, Corbin. I mean, she, in my opinion, is the crown jewel, but they've got other kids that can score goals and create goals, and their energy is fabulous. In fact, they told this to Nate Norman before the game. Of all the teams that are out there, the one that plays closest to the way we play was Notre Dame. So I paid them uh, great respect to coming into the game because I do genuinely respect what they've done this year. Uh, and the way we could show our respect for them was to just work hard and see if we could match them. Unfortunately, uh, we did in a very positive way. Anson, could you speak to that second half dynamic I was talking with Allie about? It, it, it obviously more physical. They were coming at you more. Maybe they were taking advantage of a few mistakes, but you guys were resilient and fended everything off. Yeah, so basically we play a high-pressing game. And a part of what preserves our high press is the substitution rhythm. So the kids know that if they're an elite player, they're playing in maybe 30 minutes in the first half. And then we pull them out to rest them a bit. And there are certain positions where, because the amount of energy that's required to press as a front runner and as a 10, 
uh, we have to rotate those kids. Well, in today's game, we decided to play almost every player 90 minutes. And uh, it was a big risk because you could sense as the game wore on, because we do press, it put us in a position to be up 2-0. By the end of the game, we are absolutely exhausted. So that was the case. Although this kid standing next to me, I can't believe how much energy she had. Not only did she score the game winner, but her defensive presence all over the field was a clinic on elite uh, front runners defending for their team and their teammates. And I'm just so damn proud of her. Uh, so uh, I'm in an incredibly good mood right now. Um, but I just want to tip my hat to uh, Nate, his wonderful team. And his kids that, in my opinion, certainly deserve to be in a Final Four. But I'm glad uh, they're not there at our expense. Are you talking about Alia's goal? One more for Alia. Well, Alia, look at her progression this year. Um, She started getting better and better and better. And, of course, we're getting these kids back from the U20 team. And, obviously, Ali coming off her ACL from last year, we had to get her sort of match fit. The thing I loved about Allie is how quickly she was playing great defense for us, even while all of her skills were returning. Talia came in limping. We shut her down. Uh, we've got a great medical staff. They helped her you know, get healthy. And ever since she's been on the field as a starter, I think she's averaging a goal a game, which is amazing for a 10. Uh, so I have nothing but huge respect for what Talia is doing as a player as well. This question is for... Uh, Ali, uh, now you guys look forward, of course, to the College Cup, your first College Cup. Um, one of the teams you may face is Florida State. If you guys do get that trilogy against the Seminoles, what are you guys looking for? Yeah, they won, so we are playing them, and I'm actually really excited because both teams play great soccer, and I really think with the momentum and energy we have and just the way that our team is going into every game and the way we're bonding off the field, I just think we have – such a great team going into this game and I'm just excited for this matchup because I think we got a little chip on our shoulder from the ACC final and I believe that's really going to help us in the next game. Okay, let's speak to that. Obviously you had a big game down there and they were marking you all over the field in the ACC tournament. Does it kind of motivate you to kind of avenge the, the way things went that day? Um. Yeah, I mean, obviously it – it, we were devastated that we lost, and I, I believe we could have won. And I think we got, we're got we just going to go into the next game with so much fire, so much passion, and, like, so much pride for this program, and I'm just really excited. And Thanks. then, Anson, you, you said can, Allie, Allie the game. Go ahead, Jody. Allie, you can go inside. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, thank Allie. You. All right, boys, anything else? <laughs> Yeah, Anson, you said after the Georgia game that this program needed to find a way to win a national championship game. That was, of course, in reference to the three-five-one-two formation. But what does this team need to do now that you guys are back in the College Cup to see that goal and make it come to fruition? Well, honestly, uh, we showed some things today that indicated <clears throat> we've got the potential to do anything. I mean, that was a lockdown defense against one of the country's leading scoring teams. And so if we can lock them down, I think we can lock anyone down. So that's a credit to our defense. But then it's a credit to our attack as well, uh, because um, Ali Sentinel is a special kid, a special player. Uh, But so are these other kids who continue to improve. I told this to Izzy Cox following the game. I love that Izzy Cox is still getting better. And she committed herself to continue to improve, and I could see it. It started with her defending, interestingly enough. And now it's spilling over into all aspects of her game. She's contributing in a major way. But the other thing I like is the team is sacrificing their own, you know, ambitions for a team result. And so today they did it. I mean, we didn't rotate the playing time as we customarily did. And the whole team was in with both feet for every player on the field that played. And most of them played 90. And that's a credit to a roster that's selfless, that's team first, and I think that's a great example of uh, uh, what, you know, positive chemistry can do uh, and also great leadership. So I think all those things mixing together, plus the heart and soul of these girls who killed themselves out there today, have put us in this unique position to be in another Final Four. Do you anticipate a, a similar kind of playing time against Florida State? Because I, I know during the ACC tournament game, maybe the reserves didn't play maybe as well as you would, would have hoped. Do you, do you anticipate that? Same dynamic on Friday? 
Well, the uh, issue is, uh, can we uh, figure out a way uh, in a two-game weekend to uh, win both games? And so we'll have to get back to work to decide what our substitution patterns will be uh, because uh, the team is exhausted. Of course, we knew they would be with our game plan. And there's the other thing. I want to give full credit to Damon Nahas, who obviously does uh, all of our heavy lifting, because this was his game plan, supplemented with uh, uh, Nathan Thackeray, uh, uh, who obviously coaches at a professional level. And between the two of them, they came up with uh, how we were going to win. And basically, uh, they replicated their plan. So I'm very proud of my coaching staff. Uh, and then to have someone as energetic as Heather O'Reilly on my sideline. And by the way, we showed a wonderful clip of our goals against Notre Dame before the game today. And of course, a lot of those were by Heather O'Reilly. And so we were celebrating our history, but also celebrating our staff. Uh, and uh, Brittany Bartok put that together. And we showed that uh, before the game. And it was just a fabulous motivator for our kids. Thanks, Hanson. Congratulations. Thank Thanks, you. Coach. Take care. Thanks, Coach. Bye-bye. Safe trip home.